All right, welcome to my channel. Uh, reporting to you live from the van. I got the uh, the heat running. Got the light on. Uh, I got the inverter running. Okay, so let me change the focus here. Uh, so I'm gonna get a little head start on the job I'm doing tomorrow. I got a little uh, 1700 BTU evaporator, uh, heat craft. It's a VAK 178G. Um, these are basically little uh, evaporators that you retrofit and um, reach in coolers. Uh, <clears throat> basically, they come without a TXV. So you gotta put your own TXV, so you gotta open up the manual. And I'm going to find the VAK uh, 1.7. And as you can see, at a 10 degree TD, it gives you 1700 BTUs. At a 15 degree TD, it gives you 2550 BTUs. Basically, that's a 25 degree evaporator, that's a 20 degree evaporator. And basically, what this means is if uh, what you have for a compressor, so if you have a strong compressor, it's 2500. If you have a little bit of a weaker compressor, you get 1700 BTUs out of this coil. And regardless, um, this is rated for R22. Um, you need a quarter ton or a fifth ton valve uh, for either, for both TDs. Um, but let's, it doesn't matter what refrigerant you're using, you need, you need a quarter ton valve or, or one fifth ton, which is just pr pretty much the same thing. Um, so basically, I, I'm gonna add my own valve. Um, my line sizes inside are three eighths and quarter. So I got my um, my Q kit here, and I'm gonna choose. Let me just note that you can you can actually get um, you can actually get this exact expansion valve that they mention in here. So like you don't have to to build an ex expansion valve, but I just. I just happen to have, um, yeah, see, like, you can use a EFV-15C Sporlin, um, so if you go to your local refrigeration supplier, they can supply you with that, um, but you could also, uh, make it yourself, so what I'm doing is I'm, ch I've chosen, I have my, um, my orifice already selected. So basically, I'm going internally equalized. Why? Because um, there's no distributor on this, so there's no nozzle. Um, so basically, you got to go internally equalized um, when you have no distributor. And typically, small evaporators like this will be um, uh, typically small evaporators. You don't want externally equalized. You want internally equalized which is basically two ports and you, you don't have that little port on the side so I've selected um, an EBQ so that's number one I selected an EBQ um, second one is select your cartridge I'm using a balance port valve which um, I don't want to go into that into this video but this is for conventional conventional valves where we have a balance port valve uh, so basically we're going to be using 134A and we're going to be in the 8th to a 5th ton range so we want to use a red cartridge which is AAA which is what this is so we've selected our body style selected our cartridge now we just need a power element so um, Basically, we're doing commercial refrigeration. Uh, 
and we're using 134A. We want to use a KT43JC, which is what we have here. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I can't screw this on with the, with the camera in my hand. So I'm going to screw on my power element. I'm going to put my reducer on my outlet. I'm going to put my reducer on my inlet. And I'm already going to rough in this valve into this coil. So, um, so yeah, I mean, if you're doing refrigeration work, you should know how to kind of engineer your own uh, retrofitting and all that stuff. Um, because you never know um, when you'll be on the field and you have the parts in your truck to do the job and uh, you can do it without having to call anybody and you can save a lot of time so let me put this valve in and we'll go from there all right so we're all set with our little evaporator i got my txv in there uh got my bulb sticking out with some some rubber i don't know about you guys but i like the, i love this mini split rubber i cut them with a scissor I save them and I cut them and I use them for everything. Um, but yeah, I got my TXV in. I use Stay Bright 8, uh, me personally. That was the way I was taught to, um, to uh, solder in TXVs and filter dryers. I will braze them from time to time. And uh, I do enjoy brazing. Uh, but for critical components like this I uh, generally stick to uh, stay bright 8 uh, solder which is uh, 95 5 um, uh, silver bearing solder uh, stay bright 8 is really nice um, if you haven't used this before which uh, a lot of people have but if you haven't uh, you just really have to clean your fittings really good and typically what I do is um, I clean my fittings with uh, this pad first, get it really shiny, and then I'll go with some uh, sand cloth and I'll just put some deep scratches in it. And then of course I try to use uh, Stay Clean Flux, although you can use any soldering flux. And the trick is when you do Stay Braid 8, um, you want to get some, uh, have some water handy on uh, a spray bottle, and uh, some. Sometimes I like to mix a little bit of soap, and, and as soon as your joints cool down, you just really want to wipe off your joints when they're all done, so they're shining and they don't corrode on you. So, oh yeah, so I changed my body style, um, the straight through. I changed it to this, um, which is the 90 valve. Uh, so yeah, it just kind of worked a little bit better and I didn't have to use my bender. Um, so I put that one back in my box and I use this one here. So I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully you learn something from it. Um, yeah, kind of nice working in the van at, um, you know, being able to stand up and everything so well i hope you enjoyed the video thank you